All right, so we're going to define all of the functional values for the common arcs, which means we're going to find the sines and cosines for all the common arcs that you learned the other day. So let's start with um, these right here. Okay, so these are kind of the easiest. We'll do the 0, pi over 2, pi, and 3, pi over 2. So recall that the radius is 1, so therefore the coordinates to get to this point are going to be 1, 0. So that means that the cosine of 0 is 1, and that means that the sine of 0 is 0. Okay, And let's fill them in up here. Again, radius is 1, so that means the coordinates at this point are 0, 1. So that means that the cosine of pi over 2 is 0, and that means the sine of pi over 2 is 1. I'm not going to do that for everyone, but I just want you to get the idea of how this works. So let's do pi next, this one over here. Again, the radius is 1, so the coordinates here are negative 1, 0. So that means the cosine of pi is negative 1. Oops, not cosine. And the sine of pi is 0. And then the 3 pi over 2 here at the bottom, that would be 0, negative 1. Okay, so we got those done. Now let's do our pi over fours. And let me um, kind of do a different way to show you that in a minute here. Pi over four. Okay. So let's do the pi over four. So here's my circle and the pi over four is right here. So pi over four is of course halfway between zero and pi over two. Now, your book uses the distance formula to derive these, and um, you, may, you, you may read that and learn that, and that's fine. Um, I kind of cheat and do this a different way, because most people are familiar with triangles from high school geometry classes, and therefore they're somewhat familiar with angles, which by the way, we don't even talk about this until chapter 3. Triangles and angles come in chapter 3. So that's why I say I cheat a little bit and I use it for deriving the um, functional values of the common arcs because most students understand that. Um, and then you've got two different ways to derive this. Let's take that triangle out of the circle. Boy, that's a sloppy looking triangle. There we go. Okay. Do this again. So here's my triangle. A little better. Okay, it's a right triangle. So, because uh, let's see, the radius is one, so the hypotenuse is one. Because pi over four occurs halfway between here, if I had another triangle right here, you might s notice that even with my poor sketch here, that this whole thing looks like a square if I put these two together, which means that this leg of the triangle is the same as this leg of the triangle. So we're going to call this x, and of course if this is y, and we just said that they're the same, I could just say that that's the same as x. So then using the Pythagorean uh, theorem, this tells me that x squared plus x squared equals 1 squared. So using some algebra, that's 2x squared equals 1. Divide both sides by 2, and now I have to transfer my work up here. So I have x squared equals 1 half, and now I want to square root both sides. And when I do that, I end up with x equals plus or minus the square root of 1 over 2. And if I have the square root of a numerator and denominator, I can break them apart into two separate radicals. And the square root of 1 is 1. 
over the square root of 2. Now, let's talk about rationalizing the denominator a minute. So I've got x is 1 over the square root of 2, and I want to multiply the numerator and the denominator by the square root of 2. And I'll show you what happens when you do that. So in the numerator, you have 1 times the square root of 2, which becomes square root of 2. In the denominator, you have the square root of 2 times the square root of 2, which is 2. So rationalizing the denominator, that's a process which makes the radical in the denominator disappear. So moving over to this side of the screen over here, because I have a little bit more room over here, x was the square root of 2 over 2. So because x is um, the cosine, let's go back to our other screen in a minute, because x is the cosine, then I can say the cosine of pi over 4 is square root of 2 over 2. And the sine is the same thing because both legs of the triangle were the same. So I'm just going to fill in quadrant 1 for a minute um, with that. And now I'm going to change to a different color. Okay, so here is pi over 4 right here. And we have symmetry with this circle. So all I can, all I have to do is, oh, uh, now if we were in the classroom, I would be doing this with a straight edge. Um, if you hold your ruler between those two points, you will see that they are exactly um, a straight line across. So that means that I can fill in these functional values over here, but using the correct sign. And I don't mean trig sign, I mean positive negative sign. So we go in the negative direction from 0 right here. So that means the x-coordinate is negative, square root of 2 over 2. And the y-coordinate is positive. Now, continuing on with our symmetry, this connects with this one ultimately, oh my gosh, this is so bad. I don't have a ruler here. Bear with me. You're probably doing it much better on your piece of paper as you take notes. There, that connects with that. And then ultimately, that connects with that. Oh my gosh. Alright, so let's fill in the functional values here. So this is negative square root of 2 over 2, because I went in this direction. And then the y-coordinate is also negative, square root of 2 over 2. And then filling in the fourth quadrant one, well, that's in the positive direction. So that's positive square root of 2 over 2. And it's in the negative direction this way, the y-coordinate. So that's negative square root of 2 over 2. So we have successfully found the functional values for the common arc pi over 4, 3 pi over 4, 5 pi over 4, and 7 pi over 4. Now let's do pi over 3. And, oops, I don't want that one. Let's do this one right here. So here's my pi over 3 right here. And I'm going to draw a triangle like that. And then I'm going to transfer to something else. Okay. So there's my pi over 3 and there's a right triangle. Now, before I transfer to another piece of paper um, and show you how to derive that, I just we're going to talk a little bit about this. All right, so when we, when we cut this semicircle into pi over 3, that gave me 3 equal pi or arc sections. Okay, So you probably recall from your geometry days that it's 180 degrees from here to here. So if I divide that into thirds, I end up with 60 degrees. So that means this, this angle right here is 60 degrees. And again, I'm deviating from the book. We're not going to talk about um, triangles and angles to chapter 3. The book uses the distance formula but I think this is a benefit to show you how to derive this. All right, so let's go ahead and duplicate that triangle. All right, right triangle. And then knowing this is 60 degrees, and remember the radius is 1, and so I'm just going to draw myself. It's like I do a mirror image here, okay? 
So I just um, have this similar triangle over on the right hand side. So if this is 60 degrees, that makes this 60 degrees. And then therefore that makes this angle 60 degrees. This middle section was the bisector. So that makes that 30 degrees. Okay. So this is what's known as an equal lateral or and equal angular triangle. So if this leg is one, this leg is one, this whole leg down here is one, so that means half of it is one half. Let me just draw that again like this. One and one half. So let's take it from there. So remember that x squared plus y squared equals one squared. So now we've got one half squared plus y squared equals 1. Squaring this out, this becomes 1 over 4. 4 over 4. Subtracting 1 fourth from each side, I have y squared equals 4 over 4 minus 1 over 4. And doing that subtraction, I get 3 over 4. So y squared is 3 over 4. Now it's squared, so I need to square root both sides. So let's do that a minute. So square root both sides. So I now have, let's work over here to the left. So now I have y equals plus or minus the square root of 3 over 2. And I'm going to disregard the negative one right now. So the leg of this triangle is the square root of 3 over 2. That means that for this, uh, I think I was working on the pi over 3. That means the x coordinate is 1 half. So that means that the cosine of pi over 3 is 1 half. And that means that the sine, well that's the y coordinate, is the square root of 3 over 2. So the sine of pi over 3 is square root of 3 over 2. So let's go back to, where was that other triangle? Let me find that in a minute. Here we go. And Let's put these in. Here's our pi over 3. So we had 1 half square root of 3 over 2. And now, trying to draw a straight line unsuccessfully, I think. Come over here. You can fill these in using that same knowledge that we used before. So we have negative 1 half positive square root of 3 over 2. And then transfer that one with symmetry down here. So here we have negative one half negative square root of three over two and then transferring that over here and positive one half negative square root of three over two and of course these two also line up. So to do pi over six, if I go back to this one here, when I took this semicircle and divided it into three pi shapes. Um, and so we said 180 divided by 3 is 60. Well, if I subdivide them again, here we are right here. We already did this with our pi over 6. So that's like taking your 180 and now dividing it by 6. So now you get 30 degrees. And you might notice that this triangle, let me go ahead and finish drawing this one, this triangle right here that's the same triangle as, let's go back in red, the same triangle as this one here. It's just f rotated a little bit. Um, so in other words, because this triangle, the pi over 6 triangle, looks like this, and this was 1 half, this was 1, this was square root of 3 over 2, well the pi over Oops, hang on, let me correct a mistake here. All right, this was the pi over 3, there we go. And now this is the pi over 6, which looks like the same triangle, but it's flipped over. This is still 1, so that means the vertical piece is the 1 half, and the horizontal piece is the square root of 3 over 2. So if we go back to this circle, do this one in red, then it means that these values are 
switched. Okay, and then using symmetry over here, negative square root of 3 over 2, positive 1 half, down here. Both of these are negative, negative square root of 3 over 2, negative 1 half. Connecting these over here with a hopefully straight line, and square root of 3 over 2, and then these connect also. Okay, that's deriving all of the functional values for the common arcs. You are not expected to be able to have to duplicate this, but what you do have to be able to do is know the functional values. And here's my trick for, the, for learning the functional values. And let's go to So given this blank piece of paper, um, the directions will say complete the unit circle, and we talked about the arcs the other day, so I'm not going to go over that again. So you want to be able to complete the unit circle. So most people can, remembering this is 1, they can simply do this is 1, 0, and so there's this, this, therefore this is negative 1, 0. This one is 0, 1. This one down here is 0, negative 1. Okay, so that goes pretty easily. The second thing is to memorize the pi over 4s. And the pi over 4s, let's do that in a different color. The pi over 4s are always square root of 2 over 2, square root of 2 over 2. So we can just simply fill those in. And then using symmetry, this one is negative. And then down here, they're both negative. And then over here in the fourth quadrant, the cosine is positive. The sine is positive. Okay, so that's the second one, and that actually goes pretty well also. All right, so the pi over 6. and the pi over 3. Which is which? Well, you know one of them is going to be 1 half square root of 3 over 2 because they always go together. That means the other one is going to be square root of 3 over 2, 1 half, but which goes with which? Here's my little trick. Okay. So I go up here, here's my pi over 3, and I draw, I'm going to try really hard to draw a straight line. So I drew a straight line down there. Okay. Remember, the distance of this is 1. Let me get that one out of the, way there. the distance of that is 1. So when I do this, I say to myself, this piece right here, does this look like 1 half? Or does it look like square root of 3 over 2, which by the way is 0.866? Well, this very much looks like 1 half. So therefore, the x coordinate is 1 half. And then I know the y coordinate's got to be square root of 3 over 2. And then I can simply use symmetry to complete those. And then negative 1 half, negative square root of 3 over 2. And 1 half, negative square root of 3 over 2. And so then this one right here, oops, let's change colors again. This one right here. See if I were to draw that x coordinate, or, or draw that line down there, this line right here does not look like one half. It's definitely more than one half. So that's going to be your square root of three over two. So therefore, the y coordinate is one half. And then using symmetry, you can just fill that in over here. The square root of three over two, positive one half. And the third coordinate, both of them are negative. And then fourth quadrant, the x or cosine is positive, the sine or y is negative. And there we've just duplicated the unit circle. These are just the functional values only. I know it's a long lesson, but I do think it's of value to see where they come from.